Hey, good people, what's up? This is an unusual time for me to be live streaming, I know, but it's, un what's up? it's unusual times. Oops, I got an echo. Sorry. This is... Stop that. <laughs> now I know exactly how long the delay is. It's about, I want to say, five seconds. And when I say something, it comes back around. Uh, so, tubes. All about tubes. Let's get right into it. The good old vacuum tube. We love it. We enjoy it. We go on our amps. There's an old mullard. Labeled Sylvania, I do believe. This is a uh, match pair of XF3s or 4s that I've had for years. I think I got these from Terry Kilgore. Folks know who Terry Kilgore is of uh, uh, Pasadena fame. He was uh, close friends, I do believe, in the back, way, way back in the early days with Eddie Van Halen. And uh, anyways, later on, a great guitar player in his own right. Played with Dave Lee Roth in the 90s, actually, and wrote with him and stuff like that. And later on, uh, became kind of a, uh, a tube dealer. And, uh, and I bought these tubes from him as well as some others way back when. Uh, and I still have them. So the concern is, of course, tube supply. I've been concerned about it. You've all been concerned about it, I'm sure. And I'm always an eternal optimist. You know, I think that that the crux of it to me is supply and demand. And where there's a demand, I think that even if there's a temporary lull, there will be a supply because somebody wants to make money and fill that void. Uh, so let's take what happened in the 90s as an example. Um, Way back when, in the 90s, folks remember, <clears throat> I can't remember exactly when it was, it was I want to say it was like the early 90s, 92, 93, 94, there was actually a shortage of EL34s, uh, like a real serious shortage of EL34s. There was basically nothing being made that was any good, or at least being exported where it was easy for a company like, let's say, Marshall, that was still making lots of EL34-based tube amps, easy for them to get a hold of and, you know, match quads, stick them in their 100 watt marshals and stuff like that when they were selling them. So even Marshall switched away from EL34s for a little while with just uh, putting 5881s in their in their amps. So anybody, is anybody out there, anybody buy a, a 5881 JCM 900 back in the day? I wonder. Uh, but of course, EL34s came online again because there was a demand. Um, now I know this is a more serious you know, uh, the, you know what we're seeing right now. Uh, of course, you could still get 5881s then, you know. This is a more serious overall kind of problem. But maybe that means there will be overall more of a demand from, you know, other tube factories. And I'm, I'm looking to China. That's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, the company, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce their name, although I looked it up earlier. How do you say it? company that supposedly had a fire. I've heard various stories about this, the big Chinese tube manufacturer. How do you say it? You say it like this. Shuguang. Shuguang <laughs> tubes. Uh, supposedly had a fire. Either that or I heard that they were repurposing the factory for more modern tech, and so then they had to move somewhere else. That company hasn't been producing tubes for going on like at least a couple of years now. Of course, you know, famous makers of like the, uh, uh, you know, 12AX7 that, you know, I, I really like the you know, ninth gen 12AX7 and all that. Um, I, I just really like the sound of those tubes. But anyway, they've been offline for a while, difficult to get. So I've heard various rumors about that company. There, uh, always the intention was to start up again somewhere else, I think. Um, so I've heard, I, I don't know it was supposed to be 2021, people were saying for a while they were supposed to be making tubes again. But I've heard that, that now, the, the latest thing I heard, just that I heard, I won't say from who, but that supposedly by January or so, they're supposed to be back online making tubes. That's what I heard. Kind of third hand, but that's what I heard. So besides those guys, 
there was a um, a company that's been around for a little while now, relatively new, as I understand it, in the world of tube manufacture, as far as like companies go, they haven't been around that long. But some employees, it was like tw- uh, 11 or 12 employees kind of split off uh, from the company known as Shugwang. Shugwang. <laughs> And uh, and started another company, and that's P.S. Vane. That company is currently making tubes, producing tubes. Uh, and I wanted to share this image. So if you were to go to the Tube Amp Doctor website and uh, order a pair of these uh, Tube Amp Doctor red base tubes, they are coming from P.S. Vane. That's the company uh, that makes these. Now... With the current problems, I wanted to see if I could get a set of these, how difficult they are to get a hold of. And I went on uh, the good old internet the other day, and I ordered up a pair of EL34s. Now, it said they were out of stock, but they were supposed to be back in stock the next day, which was today or yesterday. Anyways, ordered them a couple days ago, said they were going to be back in stock, expected on the 16th. That's today, right? So... Or is that yesterday? Anyway, it doesn't matter what day it is. The point is that within 24 hours, I actually got an email from uh, the nice folks at um, UPS saying my tubes had shipped. So sure enough, shipment came in and they're on their way to me. Now, how much were they? It's a matched pair of EL34s. I've never tried them before. I've seen a set recently because a friend of mine has some. And... Uh, the tad red base you know they look great i'll say that not knowing that much about tubes but they're they're beautiful they look like the nice thick glass and stuff and none of this like crooked bs like you see with a lot of you know on the inside the internals and stuff so anyways i i took the plunge and i ordered some now with shipping 90 bucks or so for the pair kind of pricey on the pricey side uh because they were coming from germany so without the shipping they would have been yeah 75 dollars something like that um i think euros they're around 35 i think maybe even a little more than that because euros i could be could be wrong with exactly how they ended up but anyway they were just under 100 bucks with shipping they weren't more than 100 dollars. so a pair 100 bucks yes you used to be able to get a pair of uh until recently you know electro harmonics el 34s all day long for i think 50 bucks 24 or 25 dollars a tube right matched for like 50 bucks so they're more but we can get into talking about uh how often you should be changing your tubes um you know i mean hundred dollars for a pair of tubes it seems 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 like it's a lot sure but uh anyways looks can be deceiving says Kay campbell for sure but i know somebody that's tested these tubes recently and evidently they say that they're great and that they kind of torture tested them. And I know, so there's 6L6s, I'll show you the picture again. You can see there's 6L6s and EL34s available. I, I know somebody that torture tested a set of 6L6s for hours and hours and hours and hours. And evidently they sound really good. And uh, they didn't fail. So, um, the, you know, jury's still out because it's early days. But... These, this seems promising, and I'm looking at, um, you know, I'm the eternal optimist anyway. So there is a company that's making tubes that you can get, is my point right now. If you need L34s, you need 6L6s, there's some right there. Um, but don't go panic. I think I think just the cost of them is going to, you know, uh, detract people from panic buying because they're expensive. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be 140 150 bucks to get a quad, you know, um, and, you know, Ninety dollars for for a pair, or after you ship, you know, so seventy five before shipping, something like that. Uh, but my other point with this is, it's not like Tube Amp Doctor has an exclusive, okay, on these tubes. So you're going to be able to get these tubes eventually, I think, just because of law of supply and demand. I mean, it's not an exclusive thing, so you're going to be able to, uh, you know, I don't know whether it'll be. Uh, Tube Depot or ARS or different folks that sell t- tubes in the States, you're going to see them and they're going to be easy. They're, they've been somewhat difficult to find. I've looked around online at a couple kind of hi-fi places in the U.S. that seem to carry the PS vein tubes. Uh, but the Tube Amp Docker was the only place I could find them where it seemed like, okay, this is geared towards guitar amp folks. 
it's just kind of the guitar amp line. I think they call them the classic line or something like that. It's kind of their lower price tubes because PS Vane's been manufacturing, you know, 300 Bs and really expensive hi-fi tubes for quite some time. I think that sort of bodes well for, you know, just thinking logically, uh, you know, if, if, if they're making all these crazy hi-fi tubes that are, you know, they've, they've got tubes that I've seen online for, you know, uh, for a quad of, you know, their most expensive BL34s are like $750 or something for, you know, with the metal bases and stuff. They're supposed to be old Telefunken style for hi-fi guys, right? If they're making tubes like that and, you know, uh, having any kind of success with that, well, they must know how to make tubes, right? So <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll, uh, these tubes are supposed to arrive within a few days. So I'm going to stick them in that, probably in the 50 watt Marshall right there and torture test them for a while. And I'll let you know how they sound. But that's my, uh, my two cents so far on this whole thing. Also, supposedly, I guess, uh, you know, the other day, because it's this is a fluid situation. Sorry, I missed that super chat. I'm going to get back to it here. Um supposedly the other day, you know, there was some uh, a post put up or something uh, with the electroharmonics folks said no more tubes coming for you know, the foreseeable future, nothing for 2022. And then evidently they put out something today that I haven't be able, been able to find online. I've been looking for it. But another post saying, no, we've worked our way around this or something and we're going to have some tubes. So I don't know. Take take that with a grain of salt. But I didn't see it. if anybody can find a link to the uh, the. The, the the latest from them that I heard about that just just popped up this morning. Peter Urban says just got a nice package from Tad. Thanks for the tip on Sunday. My Badger and other amps have a long lifeline now. See that's good news. That is good news. Uh, it looks like a few of you guys actually ordered some tubes from them. So I did notice that the six L sixes are still in stock today. The ones I just posted the photo of. I'll do that again. Uh, this is the new EL34 standard, but you can see there's a picture there. I believe that's the, or are those both the EL34s in that picture? Anyway, they've got a they've got a, an EL34 and a 6L6 on the website, right on the front page, the tad front page. Uh, 6L6s are still in stock when I just looked, but the EL34 say back ordered arriving again soon. So I think they probably got a shipment in like, you know, yesterday or today or whatever. And then there's probably been a bunch of orders. I'm probably not helping with that. Um, well, I am helping with that is what I'm saying, but probably not helping with the out of stock situation. But uh, the point of the matter is that, you know, if, if, if you order some, I think you're going to get them within short order. Wow. We got 400 people online already. Let's talk about tubes. Matt says there will be new manufacturer. The demand is high and the product is important. Yeah. I mean, I know between the, uh, the, the two companies in China that it seems like are producing guitar amp tubes right now, between the two of them, they've got to see the, uh, uh, the, the the potential to fill a demand that is um, it's just impossible to deny that it's there and where there's money to be made folks want to make money you know uh, and that's just the uh, that's just the the, the the way it is so there's a good point here uh, I'll use my helix and power cab need are not quite the same um, yeah you, you've got other options these days at least in the short term and one thing i would like to point out and recommend is that if you're cranking your amps into any kind of load you know one of these devices uh sir reactive load anything like that and you've gotten used to doing that and kind of you know an old marshall or something like that you maybe want to chill out on that and um you know, use a drive pedal for a little while or something, or at least, you know, possibly post-phase inverter master on an old Marshall, you know, something like that. Do something where you're um, maybe not, you know, beating the hell out of your tubes to practice licks at low volume at home. <laughs> you know, save your tubes for like, you know, recording and playing live and stuff. With that said, I mean, I was just talking to, uh, to Dave Friedman earlier, and he was mentioning that he sees amps all the time that come in and he's a big fan, big proponent these days, as well as other folks I know that work on amps and stuff and know amps. Big fan of like, don't change them if there's nothing wrong with them. And that's what a lot of folks do. I think they change them before there's any reason to. Um, so we, we can talk about that too. But like, basically it comes down to preamp tubes, unless they're microphonic or, you know, you're noticing some big problem. Preamp tubes, there's not really a reason to ever change them. And you routinely see preamp tubes that have been in amps for, you know, 20 30 years uh, plus you know that are still you know original to the amp sometimes say marshall's from the 70s or something 
and they still work and they're fine and there's no reason to change them and when it comes to power tubes if they're working and you haven't noticed a problem at this point yeah don't change them you know why would you uh some people think well we just should you know uh there's not really a reason to do that so um christopher says if you had no access to tubes tomorrow what what would you go to first well, I mean, I use all kinds of stuff all the time as far as like other, you know, alternatives when it comes to modeling, be it, you know, plugins or, you know, I've got the PT100 plugin, which I think sounds great. I've got, you know, Quad Cortex sitting here beside me and other modelers and all kinds of stuff. So there's all kinds of ways to go these days uh, to just get work done and play music. Um, but I obviously love tube amps. So, you know, but the, the point being, folks shouldn't panic. There's a there's a, uh, you know, there's no reason to panic buy them or anything. You might want to, you know, if you don't have a spare set for your main amp or something like that, yeah, you should seek some out and and pick up some tubes. But most tube amp guys do, you know, if that's what you're into, most folks will keep around at least, you know, uh, some spares, you know. So I, I actually bought some, uh, like about 10 or 12 Chinese, you know, tested 12AX7s a little while ago, the ones I really like. I've got also, you know, probably, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the vicinity of 15 NOS or as test as NOS, you know, kind of 12X7s around. So I've got all those lying around. And then as, as far as power tubes go, I've stocked up over the years on like, you know, I've got, you know, a few pair of uh, match tested old Siemens 34s, some mullards like this is, you know, the, the tubes I was just holding up here earlier um these xf4s i got a few pairs of those uh strangely they don't they these i i think i prefer the siemens overall and they seem to to uh always match and like some of the pairs i bought at mullards over the years and stuff that i don't know they just um have been unreliable you know you'll buy them from some tube manufacturer and then they'll red plate within like a year or something so i've still got a couple pairs but i don't trust them as much as the uh the, the Siemens tubes that, I, that I've got here. Um, <clears throat> maybe they're just better made. I don't know. But they just seem really reliable and seem to, to last a long time. Uh, so uh, Sean says, now don't forget, JJ is still making tubes. They are in production. They are. That's true. Um, but I've heard that there's really long lead times on those right now. So that is a concern. Uh like, like, you know, if you order now, that's going to be, you know, I don't know what the latest was, but it was like six months or something. Um, his, I heard that they had, you know, supply chain issues and uh, COVID issues and all kinds of things going on with that, that company. So that's a little, it's troubling and worrisome for sure, you know, with that coupled with the, uh, the situation in Russia. But that's why I was saying earlier on when I first started the live stream, looking to China, for these tube tube companies uh, and where there's a, uh, a demand that I think that, you know, they're going to want to meet that supply. So, okay, here's the, somebody found the post from Electroharmonics. This is just today. Attention all Electroharmonics tube customers. The export restriction on Russian tubes has been resolved for now. We are accepting new orders, processing back orders, and hoping to resume shipping in April. That's interesting. Um, I guess we'll, you know, it's a fluid situation and we'll see what happens. Uh, and, but I, I guess for folks that, you know, are uh, wanting to buy those tubes, that's a, that's a promising news, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I had to laugh when Richie Faulkner said his plexi kept blowing up using his aux, had everything cranked. <laughs> I heard that today, that uh, Richie had actually had some issues. Um, yeah, I generally speak. I mean, I'm, I've got an aux here. I like it, and I use it for cranking amps. I stick with either the power station or the reactive load. And anybody that's followed me over the last couple of years knows that that's kind of my preference as far as it because the 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 load presented to the amplifier just looks exactly like it should, like a speaker, like a speaker load amp seeing what it wants to see, that kind of thing. You know, so folks will tell you otherwise or whatever, but I don't know. There's a story from Richie right there. Uh, I'm a big fan of UA, a big fan of the aux. I like the way it sounds. I use it. But just when you're really stressing some of these amplifiers, why not just, you know, uh, introduce a load that looks exactly what 
a speaker looks like to the amplifier, you know? So, but, uh, you know, I, even on my, uh, SL 67, um, you know, I don't mind using the master on that amplifier and dialing it back a little bit. Um, first of all, I always use, uh, sorry, my SL 68. Why did I say that? It's an SL 68. That amp up there. It's got the post phase inverter master on the back. Um, I have never minded dialing that back, you know, uh, to say seven on the master or eight or something like that. And in some ways, I think it even sounds a little better because you've taken that massive hit, you know, and the sag and everything off of the power section of the amp and, and you're just, you're just cooling it out a little bit, but you're still getting the full distortion of the phase inverter and all that. Uh, and I always run it on low voltage too. And I think that that's a factor in, um, tube preservation folks used to say using a variac was bad for your tubes and that's been largely i think just completely disproven over the last 20 years or so uh and uh, so the, i wouldn't worry at all about running the amp you know if you got an old marshall running it on a variac and if you've got a post phase inverter master in there you can just dial it back a ways you know now you're not nailing the tubes with so much voltage and you're also not hitting them quite as hard and you're still getting a great amazing sound you know so these are these are these are recommendations I would give to anybody out there that is thinking of, you know, this stuff, worried about tubes, worried about power tubes, worried about what I'm going to do. We'll just chill out your, you know, and you, you might find that your tubes are going to, you know, outlast the life of the, the amp if you do that, you know, uh, if you're just not nailing. Because it, routinely it's true. I see amps all the time that have original tubes in them that have been in there for 30 years or, for, you know, and there's nothing wrong with the amps. They, they sound good. They work fine. So, uh it's important, you know, some, uh, super chats here. Jeez, guys. Thanks. Um, so do rectifiers fail? They do. Or are they like preamps? No, I've actually seen rectifier tubes fail. Mostly in AC thirties. I've seen rectifier tubes fail. I've had them fail. Actually. I remember being on tour once with Adam Cohen in the nineties, my old top hat, uh, which is like an AC 30 and Colin Cripps, great guitar player, vintage guitar nut. Uh, he helped me out cause, uh, my amp had a problem and he gave me an old Muller GZ34, I think. And uh, there was another, my friend Al in the 80s, I remember he used to have those Seymour Duncan convertible amps. And I remember his rectifier tube failed. He was pulling out his hair trying to figure out what was wrong with his amp. He's like, maybe it's the rectifier tube. And sure enough, he pulled that. Little, And I remembered those stories. And a little while ago, actually, I must say, even Friedman had a, he'll, he'll kill me for telling the story. No, he won't. But he, he had an amp in his shop and I happened to be in there. And he couldn't figure out what's going on. He goes, I can't figure out what's wrong with this deluxe reverb. It's like, you know, and it just like, like, I don't know that much about amp repair. But I said, did you check the rectifier tube? Because <laughs> I remembered those stories. And he goes, that's the one thing I didn't check. And it was the rectifier tube. <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> I was able to offer something useful. Uh, you, you know, I never let him live that down. But um, they, they don't go that often. That's probably why he didn't look. You know, it's like not that common of a thing. But yeah, rectifier tubes can fail. Uh, heard of preferred tubes from the tube store in Hamilton, just reset my Buddhist ringmaster combo or just, yeah, retubed. I think you mean, um, preferred tubes. That's generally speaking, you know, these, these tube dealers, these vendors, they'll, um, they'll just test and, uh, and, you know, kind of like the preferred tube, you know, generally speaking, they'll just be JJ's or electroharmonics or something, but maybe they test them and they, you know. They test up to a certain spec or something like that. Uh, you know, it's it's just like these these guys. I'll show this photo one more time here. These uh, these Tad Red Base family, the new EL34 standard. You know, I think they call them their see, Red Base Premium Select. It says over there on the right. Uh, it's a it's a you know PS vein tube, um, but yeah, they're doing the Red Bases. I do believe for Tad. But once again, like I was saying about these guys, and I love Tad. They're great, but I. I you know, it's only fair to mention they don't have an exclusive on that particular tube. Some some other tubes, I think, may have been in the past, like the black plate that were made by, uh, I'm going to forget how to pronounce the name. I hate, how's his name? Shugwang. <laughs> I've got here on my phone because I knew <laughs> I'd be talking about it. The Shugwang company in uh, China, um, the black plate RCA kind of copies and stuff like that that Tad had. I don't know that you could get those from anyone else. I think they had some sort of exclusive on those. Uh, but like I know for a fact that these PS Vein EL 34s, or at least I've been told that, they, that, that they're not a Tad exclusive thing or anything. They are doing the red bases just for them. But you're going to be able to get them from... Uh, 
uh, from other, you know, they just don't have a lot of distribution. That's you, you're not seeing them at, uh, but, but you, if you got to know that, you know, places like, you know, distributors are, are looking to, you know, to, to make it happen with those tubes uh, that are so that they're, they're, you know, easy to get in, let's say the United States. So, right. I mean, it's just supply and demand at this point. So, Anyways, what else we got here? Thank you guys for the super chats. Jeez, uh, Stu Max socks two day two bamp doctor um, has a solid state rectifier in tube form too. That's kind of cool. I mean, I kind of like solid state rectified amps anyway. So like, um, oh, I see. So you're saying that you can has a solid state rectifier in tube form. You can put a you know where there would normally be a solid state rectifier. You can substitute the tube. Interesting. When considering shipping from Germany, the price seems good. Yeah, the shipping on the tubes that I just bought, for those that are just joining, I bought a set of the TAD Red Base EL34s, had them shipped. It was about 25 euros just for the shipping. So that's like at least that's 30 bucks. It was expensive. Uh, but hey, I got a set of tubes on the way, you know, if I really needed them. I don't. I've got other. But I thought I'd just take the hit and buy some and be the guinea pig and try them out. I want to pop them in an amp and see how they sound. Uh, really appreciate all your videos and especially videos like this, says Tim. Thanks, man. I appreciate you being here. The bright cap video, EVH pickup vid, amps in the zone. Thanks, man. Thank you for being here. And it's amazing. There's a ton of people here. 480. We've got more people here than I had on Sunday. So thanks, you guys, for, uh, for, uh, for hanging out. I did snag three match quads of JJ6V6, two match quads EL34, and some NOS preamps. You went all in. Uh, I'm set for life for my 11 amps for me and friends. Let me know if you need anything and I'll send. I'm good, man. But uh, it's great that you've got some tubes in uh, in the house and you're going to be set. You know, then you don't need to worry, you know, at that point. Uh, yeah. Tube amp prices are going to go up soon. Well, um, probably, you know, uh, that you might see some increases on, you know, you know that's just kind of the uh, law of the jungle, I guess, you know, generally speaking, if a manufacturer sees a, a cost increase that get, gets passed on about three times to the, to the final customer. Cause of course, then there's a dealer that the amp goes to, or, you know, and then there's the, the customer and there's a markup each time. So, you know, uh, that's, that's just kind of what happens. And uh, it's unfortunate, but um, yeah, we might see increases. But, you know, I was saying the other day, even if it's a thing where, you know, uh, there's there's still tubes made in the U.S., one tube, the 300B, made by a company called Western Electric. They are an insane amount of money, but people buy them. <laughs> it's not going to go that way, but I, I, I with guitar amps, I, I hope it won't. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, there is EL34s out there that people buy for hi-fi, you know, the, the PS Vane, the high, super high-end, you know, the ones with the metal bases. And I think they're like seven fifty a quad or something. Well, somebody's buying those, you know. There will always be some crazy, I mean, look at Dumbles and everything else. There will always be some crazy guitar players out there that are like, no, I'm not moving away from tubes even if it went that. And I don't think it's going to come to that. So, uh, you know, that's just, uh, that's just my thoughts. I'm the eternal optimist. So, uh, I can see John Sir making tubes in a dimly lit closet room in a corner in his office in Lake Elsinore. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, the, the problem with it, I, you know, if, if it came to, if there was no more tube manufacturers, yeah, I guess you could see Western Electric or something would be like, well, if you're willing to pay $700 for a 12AX7, then we'll start making those because there'd be a demand, you know, and then you'd see them in the States. But the problem is, of course, um, there's just, you know, stricter regulation here, you know, labor costs, all that kind of stuff. And that's why we only see tubes being made in China and in Russia and in, um, you know, uh, Czech. Uh, and you know, where else? Uh, some in Japan, there's a few tubes being made in Japan still for um hi fi. The new tube, which is technically a tube, is made in Japan, but there's some other, there might be 300 B's made there. Some hi fi tubes. I saw a list today of all the, there's like seven tube manufacturers in the world. Um, you know, and most of them, there's you know, the, 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 the few companies that are being made in China, uh, and you know, and then JJ, a couple in Japan, one in the U.S., you know, with just that 300B. It's interesting, you know, they're still out there. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, um, 
mass producers won't jump on this. Well, that's not really true. Uh, yeah, for starting from scratch, yeah. But the, we're talking about folks that are already tooled up and making tubes. Like um, the, 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 the PS Vein folks evidently have, from what I've been able to understand, they've got a pretty robust operation. Uh, and they've been, you know, it's not like... They, they, They've just been quietly kind of humming along, but haven't had, a, I think, a hell of a lot of distribution, uh, you know, maybe outside of the hi-fi world. But um, I think we're gonna, just because of the laws of supply and demand, I think we're going to see that change. That's my optimism. I'm not saying that from any kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, knowledge outside of, well, that's all I'll say. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? I have hundreds of 60s and 70s Sylvania 12AX7s. Most of them slightly microphonic. They all still work fine in low to mid gain amps. Yeah, and you could probably use them in, you know, anything other than V1, um, especially in a low to mid gain amp. It's probably not going to be an issue. You know, it's just that first tube that's always the issue. Uh, you know, for the microphonics, generally speaking. What's my favorite solid state amp? That's an interesting question. Uh, wow, we got 522 people online. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Um, it's great, great to know there's. This level of interest and stuff still in tube amps, right? The modelers haven't taken over completely, even though we love them too and use them. But we love our tubes. Um, my favorite solid state amp that I've personally tried, I have to say, you because know, I don't I own a lab, an L5, which if you dial it in just right, does the tie taper thing really it's great. Although you need all the other stuff to really do it, like the the, you know, an EQ and the right guitar with the, you know, the uh, uh, right electronics and all that. But I digress. It's a cool, it's cool, but probably not my favorite. Um, the, my favorites that I've tried over the years, I thought the little blues cube amps from Roland were really good. Uh, I'm, I gotta say, I didn't have a problem with the, uh, the PV trans tube stuff. I thought it sounded really pretty good. Like, back in the 90s when it when it came out and you had that trans tube control on it you know it was a decent amp uh, i didn't have you know major major issues with it um quilter's doing some interesting things um and uh other than that there's other stuff that i know about that i actually can't really talk about because it's like more like design stuff that i've seen over over you know recent years and stuff that was really cool so there's cool stuff that's solid state um I think that more, you know, the, the the trend is towards, you know, computers and modeling and stuff like that. So, uh, although the, the one amp, and I brought this up on Sunday, that I would like to try is the one that Ty Tabor uses now, which is an orange that's like a 200-watt uh, solid-state affair. And I've seen him do a, a gig where, you know, he sounded amazing playing that amp at the Whiskey in L.A. And uh, he he really likes solid-state, you know. And when, when he was talking to Orange originally, I had him on, uh, you know, we had a chat and I did an interview with him. And he mentioned, you know, that they were talking about this tube amp and that tube amp. And then, you know, he said, you got anything solid state, you know? And they were like, what? Well, yeah, we have this one that's, you know, kind of our lower priced, but it's a head and stuff. And he's like, send me that. Because <laughs> he's really into that. And lo and behold, that's what he ended up using, you know? You can make great music with other stuff, sure. You know, uh, he's a, he's an incredible guitar player, I think. Uh, and uh, he just, he's just, just fine, you know? Some of my favorite albums have been made by that fellow with... Uh, he used tube amps once they got the dog man and stuff, but um, you know, those early ones, it's hard to ar argue with those sounds. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, here's Arthur mentioning his quilter lab and uh, line six stuff and two notes stuff. I can go without my tubes. I mean, yeah, we can, you know, at least for a little while till we see how this all shakes down. You know, the world's not ending as guitar players, we've got we've got options out there. You know, from just turning down your amp and not driving the hell out of it into loads while you're practicing your licks. <laughs> you know, save that, save, save your tubes for, you know, for for gigs and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Well, I'll, I'll go down to the uh, the uh, bottom of the chat here because I'm kind of kind of around the middle here. Let's let's see what we got down here. I think I missed a super chat there's a fellow john hey thanks man thank you guys just all for the uh the uh super chat so hugo that's a good uh comment and sort of quasi question here i was always under the impression ps vein was just the high end who i'm gonna say it wrong again 
I need to learn how to pronounce this word. It is Shugwing. I think I'm saying it right. After all this, I'm probably saying it wrong. But anyways, the way I understand it is P.S. Fain was uh, 11 or 12 employees that split off, actually, from Shugwing Company and formed another company. And I believe it's a private company, P.S. Fain, where Shugwing is maybe owned by the state. By It's like a government-owned company. That's what I understand. Not 100% sure about any of that. Uh, that's just what I've heard on the internet and stuff. Yeah. But I think they're tight, the two companies, because there is a, you know, and I don't think there's a lot of competition there. The other guys just sort of split off and did more like a, you know, high-end hi-fi thing. Um, and, uh, but yeah, you got those two companies. Um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens with the, the Shugwang folks and see if that, that, like I say, I heard that maybe early next year is the shipping stuff. That's what I've heard the latest. Uh, which are some of my favorite tubes. I mean, they, they were making uh, some some great stuff. The, the 12AX7s are my favorite ones out of new stuff that I've tried. Uh, you know, that JJ, you know, that E83CC JJ is really nice, too. Other than that tube, the Chinese 12AX7, uh, some coolest stuff that I've heard in a while. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tone Monster uh, says that, you know, price is going up on electro harmonics. Yeah, well, a lot of people have been kind of panic buying and the supply has been uncertain. But the latest today, they say, is that, uh, you know, that they're going to be shipping in April. So that they found a way around, you know, the, the current woes and that they're going to be shipping things. I have I've got uh, well, I'm not going to get into that, but I was going to say, you know, take that for what what you will. Um Stay as far away from politics and all this as possibly can. I just keep this about the tubes. Uh, let's see. There's a, another super chat there. Uh, that is from Sasha. Yeah, I picked up a modeler for practice saving tubes for recording. I think that that's a good idea right now. You know, like I, I really quite actually like playing through modelers for practice. Uh, I don't need to fire up loud amps with you know now increasingly expensive tubes and stuff like that and try and get them down to some mouse fart level or whatever or with my headphones like to be happy i kind of enjoy even my little new x solid state jobby that's like this big or it's i guess it's modeling but it's tiny um just turning that on to tv volume and playing at the on the couch you know at home i'm fine with that actually like it's it's kind of more enjoyable for me to practice at a really low volume like that when i know i'm not bothering people and it's not all this ordeal of turning on stuff and playing through guitar speakers. I don't need to do that when I'm just practicing. Now, if I'm recording, I go at it a different way. I'm in this room and I've got, you know, cab isolated and all that. Then I fire up the tube amps and stuff and use them. Um, or if I'm on tour and stuff, you know. But there is ways that we can kind of conserve our tubes and not end up, you know. So, uh, yeah. I would just say that... Uh, that uh you know what you're going to want to do is not be cranking your amps right now into uh you know loads for no good reason and um and using up your tubes because they do you know they it'll shorten the life real like a lot you know when you're when you're really using the amps uh Let's see here. Uh, this fella here says, that's Steven. Hey, man, what's up? He says, using a Yamaha TH230 wireless. Damn, that thing's fun to practice. Yeah, those little amps are like, you know, arguably it's like more fun for me to play through things like that for practice. When it's small, it's got a great sound. You know, even my little, I had a little uh, cube, you know, uh, rolling thing like this big that was fun to play through for practice. It's got some echo, you know, it sounds great. Or the little Black Star Fly, you know, that was great for hotel rooms. Uh, yeah, so bottom line is money. I agree. The bottom line is money. If there's money be, to be made, people are going to make it if they can, you know. That's why, you know, in the States, it's like, you know, labor costs and um, environmental protection and stuff like that. It's difficult to make money. And it's also probably just the fact that it's been, got to keep in mind, like U.S. tube production really stopped. 80s right so ever since then the the main tube manufacturers have been you know obviously in china russia right these factories have kept going which means that there's expertise there with folks that are running them a lot of that in the u.s i think at this point it's just how many folks even know how to you know 
is there any expertise there at all when it comes to making tubes anymore? A lot of these folks would be really, really, really old at this point. Um, but you know, I'm sure there's lots of young folks working in these factories, uh, you know, uh, you know, that, that, that learned the, you know, the, <clears throat> the ropes as far as making tubes and stuff like that, uh, you know, overseas. So, uh, let's see. Darren says, I've been wanting to try a neural DSP plugin for practice. I would, you know, uh, I've got no problems with you know, with plugins for practice and even recording records and stuff. So, you know, I've used them on, on, uh, the brainwork stuff, my own PT 100 plugin on, you know, recording some of my last album. So, uh, Rick says that he just ordered some of the Ted six Oh six from Germany. Thanks for the tip Been looking for these, uh, for three days now. That's great. Uh, yeah, you kind of got to get them there. I think like straight from, it seems to me, Lauren was mentioning that, uh, Stumac has some. I looked on the Stumac website and I couldn't find what I was looking for, to be honest. Uh, so I just went straight to the the Tube Amp Doctor website. Uh, I was able to easily order what I was looking for. They said that it was out of stock, but ex expected shipment was the next day, which was this morning, I think, or yesterday. I can't remember. Uh, and sure enough, I got a ship notice from UPS saying that my EL 34s were on the way today. So I ordered a pair. Going to give them a shot. I'll let you guys know how they sound when I get them. Uh, yeah. So, um, BMO said that there's a tariff. I think this is you're mentioning on Russian tubes. This is I've heard stories about this as well, that there will be a tariff added. And so more pricey supply will continue, but they'll be expensive because of tariffs. Uh, I don't know. Heard some talk of that as well today. Uh, this is interesting. The, the TAD, uh, 606 GC was as good as my old GE. And I believe these would be the, the short bottle, uh, one of the two that they were having made by the Shugang. Shugang, did I say it right? Uh, the Chinese tube factory, you know, that was producing kind of an exclusive tube for TAD, supposedly exclusive tube. Those ones were, uh, you know, they had an RCA style and then they also had maybe like a GE style or something like that. One was a bit more like a, I believe one was more like a 5881 style and the other one was more like an old RCA, something like that. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's supposed to be great from what I'd heard, you know. Uh, have you played the new 5150 Iconic Amp? If so, what's your thought? I did actually, uh, through, so I was somewhere the other day and there was one and I played it for a minute. My thought was, it actually sounds uh, quite cool. I thought the clean channel sounded like a bit more of a true clean channel than the earlier 5150 amplifiers, and uh, like, like which was just kind of like a, a bit of a dirty clean to me. Um, but I thought the one on the new amp sounded uh, really pretty cool. And uh, that the tone of the distortion reminded me of, it was just more raw than what, like less compression, less like gain, saturation. It seemed more raw and kind of like, uh, I don't want to say vintage Marshall sounding, but maybe or something. It, it just seemed to be a bit more of that character in the iconic, like a bit more of a throwback sound. Um, and I, I thought it really sounded pretty cool. Less compressed, like more raw. That's what I heard. Uh, here's a Japanese 300B. I read a great article today uh, on, you know, tubes made in Japan. Tubes made. There's more tubes being made in Japan than I realized. Most of it's all hi-fi stuff, you know, really expensive kind of, but 300B made over there. There's at least three companies, you know, factories still making tubes. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? This is interesting. Uh, I felt the in the addiction fell in the addition. I think you're saying of NOS tube collecting ten or fifteen years ago. Today, I have near a thousand. Boy, did you ever! I bought a few, but not like that. Uh, well, you say you'll never sell them. You sell them if you you know don't think you're going to use it when and if the time comes, and you think you can use the money more than the tubes. You know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, buying tubes support, supports communism. So there's, so there's that. Well, it gets us into the political discussion, doesn't it? But I think we all, uh, share in your, um, concern, you know, that's all. Uh, 
and uh, it would be nice to have a uh, platform for trading tubes. I have a load of highly desirable NOS tubes that I put aside in favor of others I prefer. Could be fun to trade them with other players. Yeah, that's neat. I mean, somebody was mentioning the other day that maybe the gear page should start a separate tube section. <laughs> uh, that, that could be, at this point, maybe, you know, uh, a, a pretty good point, you know. But I guess you could start a Facebook group or something like that, um, you know, tube amp nuts and have it be a, you know, a members only kind of thing or something. You'd probably get, you know, some folks uh, that were that were interested from all over the world, I would think. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Natasha says that uh, she was uh, it secured uh, George Harrison Rose with Telly, canceled the order and bought an SLO instead. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's any doubt that, you know, uh, just the way the world's going, that amps are going to go up and that tubes will be a bit more. I think the days of, you know, $15 EL34s or something are probably over. They're probably going to be more like you know, with at least for the foreseeable future, 30, 35 bucks, even the affordable ones, if we can, you know, that's what the, the PS vein, uh, goes for, you know, they're about set somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 80 a pair, you know, and then add the, if there's any exchange or shipping and all that stuff, it cost me a little under a hundred bucks to get a pair of those, which is, you know, that's bordering on what NOS cost 15 years ago for a pair of Siemens or something, you know, um, but it's still not insane, uh, you know. As if you're building an amp, it is, you know. If you've got to pay those kinds of prices, you know, uh, it, it, yeah, your your costs are going to go. You know, the cost of an amplifier is going to go up a couple hundred bucks, you know, just for the, uh, you know, maybe more, depending on how many tubes are in the amp, the quartet or you know, twelve x sevens and all that. Um, yeah, what else we got here? Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, I was just looking through your comments and stuff. Are Ruby distributing still? Uh, yeah, I think Ruby is, you know, just like another, um, you know, they're a rebrander and they're, they're buying from JJ. They were buying from Russia. They were buying from, uh, China and then rebranding and stuff like that. Uh, similar to Tad, Ruby might have had some exclusive stuff over the years too. I just can't remember right now. It's possible they did, but it seems like the main folks that are, um, and I've met them and they're enthusiastic. I remember meeting them at Guitar Summit a little while ago in Germany, the tube amp doctor folks, the Tad folks, really, you know, passionate about tubes and guitar amp parts and stuff like that. And, and you know, seemingly getting these uh, kind of, you know, exclusive or at least, you know, unique in some way to them. Uh, designs like the red base uh, PS vein tubes, or indeed like the black plate RCA six L sixes, uh, the copies that they were getting uh, from China. You know, not too, nobody else out there doing that really that I know of those exclusive things. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't know about. I haven't seen much talk of Ruby lately, but I'm sure they're still out there doing their thing. You know. Uh, what else we got here? Ruby's a rebrand. Everything's a rebrand these days. Everything's a rebrand except if you've got Tube Amp Doctor that's getting a tube made somewhere. It's kind of contract manufacturer. At that point, they're getting a tube. You know, they've got something that, and then if it's exclusive to them, well, then, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, not a rebrand, you know. Um, but, yeah, just about every other, you know, that you're seeing come from anywhere is a, is a, is a rebrand if it's, be it, you know, Ruby Tubes or, you know. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Uh, best EL34 I've ever had is a Tesla. You know, I would, I would agree with that. The original, you know, the, uh, Chuck made, uh, the Tesla tubes, fantastic sounding tubes. Had them in my uh, Comet, the uh, mesh pair for a while. I broke one of them. God, like. I can't remember what I did. I either dropped it or something that that sucked. But yeah, th that th those tubes sound great. And I, I remember back in the '80s, my friend Al, great guitar player, that was like really into you know tone and stuff. And he had he you know, he was always swearing by the old Teslas. He had the old uh, really cool looking blue and red glass 
Teslas back in the day. If anybody remembers those, the JJ, they would make some occasionally. They do. I've seen like blue glass JJs, but uh, Al's were the original Tesla. You know, the 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 blue and the red glass you could get. They look so cool, uh, but really really good sounding. Um, my favorite, really, these days, I think, for you know the uh, NOS stuff is the old the Siemens stuff. It just sounds great to me, and they seem to last. I just really like the sound of them. Uh, close second to the the, the Teslas and, and Mullards and all that are cool. I've just had less luck with Mullards lasting. All the because I've got a number of you know match pairs and stuff over the years that I've used in amps, and they you know you'll you'll buy a match from like a tube dealer stuff, and then you'll be something wrong or whatever and the, they will have drifted or you know red plate i've had like that stuff happen with those of the years so i'm not as big a fan uh i remember once going to uh fred from divided by 13 to get an amp worked on or something and i remember mentioning yeah i had this pair of you know mullers go bad and he goes oh yeah those tubes that everybody always talks about as being the greatest thing ever you know kind of making a he's like yeah not so much right you know like he wasn't really a fan of mullers <laughs> The twelve X sevens, you know, sound great, but obviously power tubes take the heat. They're the ones that, and he, he, I guess he'd seen a lot of failures and stuff over the years. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what else we got? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I guess I should sell some of my stash now. Says BMO. Well, no. If you if you don't think you need them, and you know, there's definitely going to be buyers out there. It's a buyer's market, I would say right now. <laughs> That's for sure. I should say it's a seller's market. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, you know, you're definitely going to, probably there's money to be made, you know, if you've got tubes that you don't need. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Groove tubes have multiple sources. Yeah, they always had, you know. When Fender bought them, you know, I I, I know that they were, uh, had some exclusive stuff. Like, let's say the GT EL34M. That was, you know, just kind of getting up and running. And I really liked that tube, actually. And that was around the time that Groove Tubes was sold to Fender. And I was like, oh, no, what's going to happen with that tube? They also had their 12AX7M that was supposedly a Mullard clone. That was like, mm, not so much. It, it sounded okay, but they weren't like, they weren't a Mullard. Um, you know, nothing's ever been. Not uh, The 12AX7 I'm talking about, because those were, those are like really creme de la creme. Uh, but uh, they were kind of like low gain and like just, the, at least the ones I tried. And they, they had some failures and stuff. But the the the, uh, the EL34M, if you could still get that, I don't know. Uh, th that tube was a, a true uh, XF2 copy, like with the dual getters and stuff, the you know, on the top. And uh, nobody but groove, groove tubes had those, as far as I know. And they were really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Do you own a tube tester? I don't, but I know plenty of people that do. So if I need tubes tested, I can go. I mean, the, uh, I've got to, you know, either, you know, the Sir folks or Friedman, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What else have we got here? Got some Genelec 6v6s a couple days ago. That's cool. That's a good find. Uh, yeah. What else we got? Let's see. Imagine the people viewing this stream sitting in a venue. The place would be packed. Yeah, we got 570 people online. Um, well, while there's these folks online, I'll be, I don't want to keep like, I sound like I'm, uh, like I'm, uh, you know, massive advocate for Tad or something, but I do appreciate what they're doing and that they do have these. Um, I'm not, it's not like I'm hooked up with them in any way, shape or form. I've met the folks a couple of times, but this was the tube I was talking about on my Sunday live stream, these red base. Um, I'm just using this as an example. This is a tube coming from a factory that, you know, not a lot of people, you know, some folks talking about, but, you know, this is the EL34, and they've also got a 6L6. And if you, if you want a new EL34, 6L6, EL34s were out of stock as of today, probably because, you know, we all ordered them the other day, but <laughs> they still had 6L6s in line. I hear the 6L6s are really nice, and they sound great. So if you need some, if you've got a Pro Reverb or, you know, or a, uh, I don't know, an SLO 100 or something that uses those. Uh, that's an option, you know. And they're not cheap, but they're not crazy expensive either. It's not ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you get some, uh, let us know. Let us know. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's see. 
Uh, I had the EL34M back in the day when my only amp was JCM2000. They're good, right? I like that tube. I thought it sounded great in my comment. I remember that was the one. My comment's got an external bias knob on it, so it was easy for me to change tubes without having to go to people. That's a dual EL34 amp. That sounds amazing. So I used to go and pop tubes in there and try different sets of, you know, be it Mullers or Teslas or um, Siemens or, you know, EH or, and then the EL34Ms. I had all those tubes in there and I could easily bias up the amp and, uh, you know, try all these different tubes and stuff and see what I thought. And no screwing around. It's no master volume, no effects loop, no nothing. Just good old school, turn it up. And so that's how I get to really hear what they sounded like, you know. So that's where I kind of like, you know, going on over 15 years ago now. I but, No, it was about 15 years ago, I guess, that I got that amp. Something like that, where I would try all these EL34s and really, all right, how do all these tubes sound, you know. Uh, and uh, this is not true. Uh, Monstro Guitar is saying, I just read Joe B is launching a factory for manufacturing tubes. That's not true. He posted, a, he said, I am not doing that. I play guitar. <laughs> and that's a misinfo. So uh, somebody put that out. Just kind of, you know, because that's the internet these days. You know, don't watch it. You can't trust. Can't trust. So that is, I can hear a report that that's Joe's not doing that. Groove tubes are rebranders, right? I mean, they're, they're kind of uh, like every other, you know, tubes come from basically for guitar amps anyway. Uh, three main factories really over the last, it's a you know, number of at least, you know, going on well over 10 years. Uh, and uh, everybody, be it, you know, Ruby, you know, tube amp doctor, groove tubes, all these folks are, I guess, rebranders, uh, resellers you know, however you want to, you know, define it. They're buying the tubes from the same places. They've all got kind of the same product. Uh, and they, uh, you know, simply, you know, put their name on them and, and sell them. So, but they're not, they're not making them. There's very few companies that are actually like, I mean, you know, some of the, the, the PS Vane folks are, uh, I guess, full music. That's another one. That's a separate factory, by the way. If anybody ever saw these full music tubes or Northern Electric coming from China, that was another Chinese tube factory. And you would see them in, I think, the tube store, uh, which is based in Canada, I think. Uh, I hope I'm getting all this right. But anyway, the Northern Electric or full music 12AX7s, they might be discontinued now, but that was yet another Chinese tube factory. And uh, they were uh, uh, anything, you know, some of these companies you'd see with the full music. You know, they, that was their tube, you know. Um, my, my point just, the, and P.S. Vane, you'll see, you know, label P.S. Vane, you know, coming from them. Uh, you know, not, you know, rebranded or whatever. Well, it, to be fair, uh, Mike Matthews, I mean, Electroharmonics, those aren't, okay, yeah, you'll see some rebranded, uh, but you can also, of course, get Electroharmonics branded tubes, right, from, you know. Uh, they they were legit making their tubes in the, in that factory in in Russia, you know. So they're not a uh, and he owns all those brand names, the Tongue Soul and the Mullard and stuff. And that was all just you know kind of marketing or whatever. But but you know yeah, those aren't those 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 weren't rebrands. But but my point being, the same tubes you could buy from Tube Amp Doctor or something, and they would be you know a, a Electro Harmonics EL34. They would just call it the EL34R or something, you know, and it'd have tad written on it you know or, or whatever confusing isn't it but you know it's all marketing do i think it's possible for the u.s to produce tubes so you know i should point out that western electric 300b is made in the u.s there is one company that makes tubes in the u.s but they are uh i mean there's thousands for a pair i think so i'm not sure exactly let's take a look uh Let's see how much they are. There they are. Western Electric in Rossville. And made in the USA. Ships from our warehouse to your door for the sum of let's see, add to cart. I'm gonna I'm just I'm on their shopping cart right now. I'm gonna add them to my cart and I'm gonna see how much they are. Yeah, they're fifteen hundred a pair. So a match pair of US made 300 B tubes for your hi-fi situation. 1499 plus shipping. 
plus shipping. Uh, so it's interesting. It can be done. It's just that it can't really probably be done for what folks want to pay for a 12x7 or a Neo 34 or something for the Marshall, you know. Uh, but the, the, the hi-fi world is an amazing, you know, it's an incredible sort of uh, uh, testament to and maybe case study in, you know, uh, subculture, you know. Build it and they will come. A few folks anyway, you know. Uh, tried to find a replacement set for my SL68 a couple days ago. No joy, but then I heard from a dealer today the embargo was lifted and shipping should re resume next month. So that's the Mike Matthews official, so quasi-official coming from. You know, the word from the uh, electroharmonics Sovtech new sensor folks was that was the word today that they're obviously everybody's going crazy working on this uh, situation and trying to rectify it because there's there's money to be made and where there's money to be made, people want to make money. Right. So, uh, you know, I will say if you need tubes, there's some positive signs out there, you know. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay, what else have we got here? Uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom of the chat. Uh, I would buy USA EL34 and or 6550 Western Electric all day, every day. You know you know what's funny? Um, I probably would too because I'm just that crazy and so are you. So if if they were, okay, what what's everybody's limit what they would pay? Because I know that everybody's going to be different with this. Some people are going to be like, 50 bucks a pair, that's it. I'm out if it's more than that. And then there's going to be other people that are like, I'd go 500 a pair for a set of, you know, US made 68 sets. And that is uh, just the, you know, it's, it's, it bears out in like, if you can find a, a pair of matched uh, GE or Sylvania 68 sevens, people will buy them right now for, you know, new old, new old stock or test as new, you know, people will buy them. So, uh, for the tube fund. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, purpose, purposeful porpoise says a thousand dollars. Is that for a quad or for a, or for a pair? <laughs> Matt says 150. This is a, this is a fun game to play. 200 maybe says Tom. I'm going to go, I'm going to go 500. I would pay 500 for a pair of matched brand new US made. As long as the, I don't know if I'd be the guinea pig and get them first, but as long as people were like, yep, I put these in my amp and torture tested them and they last a long time. I'm going to go 499 for a matched pair, but they got to include the shipping. I'm not paying another $10 for shipping. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm tired. I, I don't know. So two dollars says floop de doo. Two hundred for a pair says Roscoe. This is a fun game. Everybody's got a price. Um, absolute max for sixty-five fifty USA is one fifty a tube. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher's just asking a quick question about headphones here. Have you ever had a broken headband uh, on your? Do you mean like the snapped or something? No, mine are cool. Um, Year and a half of general use, my favorite headphones just broke. That's a bummer. But at least they're only like, you know, 60 bucks or something like that, right? For the, uh, the pair of headphones. But I'm sorry to hear that. That's a bummer. I hate breaking things like that. And then you got to like, say, what am I going to do? Get them fixed? No, of course not. I'm just going to buy a new pair. Uh, kind of a bummer. Uh, Nigel says he's still got gear acquisition syndrome for an original set of KT77's Gold Lion. That'll cost you a lot these days. Probably 1500 for the pair or something like that. <laughs> if you could even find some somewhere. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, have you seen any six, Sylvania 687? Someone must have them other than Dave. I haven't. Uh, they're really hard to find if if you if you could find any. But you know what? I tell you something about those tubes. I tried them in you know like I, we used some in the some of the videos that we made and stuff like that recently for the you know kind of the EBH video. I guess I had those NAM stuff. They're really cool. They're not my favorite. You know, I'm I'm just fine with. I'm here and now. I'll tell you, I'm I'm just fine with the uh, you know a nice set of uh, the Siemens EL thirty fours in you know either match quad or or a pair of just as cool. I know they might not sound authentically as Eddie Van Halen or something, but, uh, you know, from my, to my ear, from what I'm going for, I actually really like them. 
and they're, I'm fine with them. So Sylvania 6 a 7 is cool, but not it's not my Marshall Nirvana, you know. So uh, and, and I was almost happy to discover that, you know. And the only way to know is by getting them and cranking, uh, you know, cranking the amp and, and going, huh. You know, and really testing and listening, you know. And I just know I, I really like the Siemens tubes. They just have, they're a little bit leaner in the lows, I think, but they've got these great mids that where guitar lives to me anyway. So um Son of Life asks, you're gonna get a lot of responses to this. Uh what are the sound characteristics of an amp that has a tube going? Well, you know, the tube's only one part of the equation, but generally speaking, folks like the compression, the dynamic quality, the roll down you can get by rolling down the volume on the guitar, and it just kind of cleans up in such a nice way. It's all about the, you know, I would say compression, the bounce, the the dampening factor of a tube amp and be kind of the output transformer being connected to the speaker and the way that that interplay happens and all that good stuff. That's really rep hard. Like it's almost like a uh, byproduct of it, of the fact that it's tubes in an amp. Uh, some of the characteristics, I think the impedance curve and all that, all these different things that don't happen as much with a solid state amp, uh, unless you kind of try and design it in and uh, to mimic some of those characteristics. And folks have been trying to do that for, years and years and years. I guess it was like a happy byproduct of the fact that all you could do was manufacture tube amps back in the day. Um, and they just happened to have a feel and a bounce and a sound and stuff like that to them that well, once solid state came around, I was like, oh, it sounds and feels different and somehow maybe stiffer and less dynamic and pleasing to the ear or whatever, you know, something. So uh yeah fifteen hundred dollars a pair will get me divorced yeah your two amp days are over time for the modeler <laughs> and my wife is a divorce attorney <laughs> uh i'm sorry i get I'm, I'm 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 not laughing at you i'm laughing with you well that's really funny <laughs> yeah don't mess around with that you know it's, pretty, it's i'm uh single so you know there's a reason right i mean look at this tools of the trade you know this is all this crap is yeah it all adds up when you consider no kids here i am it's lonely but i i, I can keep my place warm at night with the, uh, the 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 warmth of tubes uh the biggest issue with uh tube manufacturers is the dangerous, dangerous chemicals that are involved so it makes it prohibitively expensive in countries that have environmental laws and protocol that's all true but it's also a supply and demand thing where uh yeah true but even if let's say they're you know taking the environmental the epa uh out of the equation and you know all that kind of stuff the chemicals and everything is still like it, it, producing a tube now we can just get down to you know an expertise tooling setting it up like it would still be really expensive even if there was none of that stuff in the way to produce a tube in the united states that people wanted to pay for you know um I, I really equate a lot of it to starting from scratch. Like, because I know like Aspen Pittman years ago, he would try and do this stuff and it would just be like, uh, I mean, I've talked with, you know, folks about this where it's like, it's, like when he was trying to get his tube thing up and running and stuff like that. And it's just like, it was, you know, he was a, a dreamer and he had a lot of great, uh, you know, but like that when you walk into a tube factory or if you have to take a tour of one and realize the amount of machinery and the amount of expertise and stuff like that, what a monumental task it would be to set up new tube manufacturer. Let's say even if there was a market, it would be a monumental task and having people there that knew how to do it, training people, you know, and to run that whole show. I mean, it was necessary back in the day. There was a massive market for it when everything used tubes. As that declined, you know, uh, it just became less and less and less and less viable to do that in the U.S. And then they just stopped. Well, you know, like anything, if you stop, the expertise fades. People go into other careers and stuff. The equipment gets parted out, sold off and all that stuff. And then it goes elsewhere. And, uh, well, that never happened in, you know, some of these factories in, uh, you know, the big Chinese tube factory, I think it, since I heard it was running since 65 or something like that. So it's like, uh, 1965, you know, so you, you had these, this manufacturing is carried on all the way through and it just never, there was never a lull. And all of a sudden they probably picked up the slack for, you know, whereas there was, you know, probably hundreds of, or I don't know, at least dozens of tube manufacturers all over the, the world. 
when it gets down to like there being, you know, 20 and then 15 and then 10 and then as there's less and less demand, but now they're picking up the slack for all those. It just makes sense, right? So to, to start again, like, wow, you know. Uh, there was a tube. Uh, does anybody remember the, the uh, there was a, it was supposedly made at uh, the Mullard factory uh, or at least in the, you know, the, not in the factory, but at least in the location, I think, where, you know, Mullard tubes used to be made or something, but they were called Black Blackburn, I think was the name of the, I have a few here. They were a new 12AX7 design. This was going back to 2006, 7, 8, something like that. This company had tooled up and started actually making these tubes and they were sending me actually samples and I was kind of a guinea pig for them for a little while and I was trying them. The early ones were microphonic. Um, then I got a couple that were better and, you know, they, they looked really weird on the inside, but, you know, basically the size of a 12X7, but the, the tubes had like, they were tiny on the inside, the, the internals and stuff. Uh, but it was a new tube being manufactured in Britain and then something happened and their funding fell apart or something. They just went away and it was gone. But I have some of them here. And they sounded pretty cool uh, once you get past the microphonic ones and stuff. I had a couple that were, were kind of neat. Um, folks have tried and gotten somewhere, you know. But uh, and once again, the, you know, this, you can go to the Western Electric website right now. It's kind of interesting. Go there and check it out. It's like uh, westernelectric.com. You can go there and, you know, uh, buy a set of these tubes, and they're 1500 for the pit. Check it out here. I'll put the... Uh, I'll put the link in the uh, in the chat here. I think it'll pop up. Let's see. You go there, and there's an American-made tube, you know, one <laughs> for your hi-fi. I'm not going to put it in a guitar amp. Uh, <clears throat> so can we see one, Cooper says. You want to see one of these tubes from, from England? Um, yeah. I've got a box of tubes in the other room. I can go get it if you want. A little, a little show and tell. Is there any interest in that? Uh, I, I'm happy to go get them and show them to you. It'll just be, take me like, uh, you know, 25 seconds or something. I don't want to uh, lose all you folks because I've got 560 of you online. But if there's some interest, I'll go grab them from the other room. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's see. I'd love to see it. it says Driven Tone. Uh, yo, yes. All right, you guys talk amongst yourselves. Tell people not to leave if because I'm there's like another 10. I've got 567 online. I'll go get these tubes and uh, you can take a look. They are interesting, just as kind of a historical thing. Somebody actually getting up and running, making a new tube. I'll be right back. I uh, found my box of power tubes, but I don't know. Let's see, here. Let's see if I can find my. <laughs> I don't know where my box of preamp tubes is. Because I'm messy. This is what happens. Just hang out with me for a few minutes here, and you'll discover. Um, this is all power tubes. It's going to take me a second to find the, uh, where's my box of premium tubes? They're in here somewhere. Oh, I know where they are. I'll put them in a different kind of container. Take a look at these for a second. These are a couple of sets of, I bought these years ago. These are uh, Siemens, the uh, Yo 34s, Match Pairs, branded Boogie. They, they had a ton of them. And uh, got some of those. Here's some old... Creme de la creme original Mullard boxes. Kind of cool, right? These might not have the tubes in them, I'm sure, because I've, I've mixed some of them up over the years. Let's see. Oh, no. This is a, this is a legit real deal right there. Beluga Caviar. 
Muller DL 34s in original boxes. These came from Gene Ultrasound in New York. And uh, he's a good friend. And gave me some, some match pairs of these. So the original Muller. These are XF3s, I think. Um, so I've got some stuff like this here, you know. But uh, let me see if I can just find the preamp tubes for you real quick. I'll be right back. I know what I did. All righty, found it. Lights change color in here since I started the live stream. <laughs> How did that happen? All right, so a little while ago, I went and got a whole bunch of Chinese 12X7s, you know, so I have at least, I don't know, maybe well, quite a few here. Maybe I bought more like 20. And I got some of the the EH uh, 7025s to try, which are, are quite good, I find. You know, so I've got a few of those lying around in here, too. But those are all new tubes. Um, this is a box of old 12X7s, some interesting stuff. So in here we will find the... I know I've got... Yeah, there's one. Okay, there it is. Let's get a shield on it on the top. So he's got a condom on it. <laughs> These are the, uh, I don't even know if I can get this off, but you can look at the plate. See the weird plates? Isn't that strange? So this internals of this tube are very strange. Tech tubes, that's what they were called, tech tubes. And this came from England. And so this was when they were sending me tubes to test out and try. Uh, and you know, I was getting different and it was exciting to be, get new 12 X sevens and be kind of like, you know, R and Ding these things. But so these were made and supposedly the, it was Blackburn folks, an original Mullard, uh, kind of location. And it's actually labeled if I could get this tube shield off. I don't know that I want to do that actually, cause I'm going to wreck it. It's, it's kind of one of a kind. I don't know that anybody's got this. So maybe I just won't tear it off of there, but I thought I had other. I've probably got another one or two of these somewhere, but anyway, that's kind of like, that is the only tube that probably has come out of England for guitar amps in the last, you know, however many, many years. And they were, they were trying to fight microphonics and that's the, that's the deal with the shield on the top to keep them from ringing. Um, and, uh, does anybody remember these? Did anybody ever see these? Uh, anybody ever see these? Chinese power tubes are microphonic. No, that's not really true. Look, it's Rob Zombie. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, you know a blanket statement, and blanket statements don't generally provide uh, uh, you know are, are, are generally not uh, accurate. So I've got plenty of you know I've got EL thirty four Bs that were you know Chinese in in that uh, down there in that red amp. You can see the corner of it down there. That Germino, they're fine microphonic so plenty of good you know chinese power tubes have been made over the last few years uh shh, don't tell pete what we were doing what are you what are you doing what are you doing don't be good out there uh hey pete how do you pronounce that name of that company in china <laughs> you guys are just playing with me now uh let's see here it's pronounced there you go anyways interesting a little bit of you know folklore there a British-made tube with a uh, looks like a uh, some sort of prophylactic or 
on it. What, are, what else is in here? Well, some interesting stuff. Um, it's a box full of kind of, you know, NOS stuff that I've got. So it's got American Navy Joint, Army Navy, Colby X7. There's a long plate. Hmm, I guess a new mullard. It's not an old mullard. What else we got here? This is Sylvania. Those long, long plate Sylvanias. These sound great if they're tested and stuff in a uh, phase inverter. I don't really like those. They're real high gain, like really high gain. Like one way to side or something. Oh, here's one of the groove tubes, uh, 12x7M. So this is when groove tubes was making this, you know, trying to do a mullard. It says 12x7M on the side, kind of a mullard clone. These were okay, but a lot of them were, you know, if not microphonic, just kind of sounded a little dull, not that. You know, but the 12x or the EL34M, quite quite a great tube actually. That was a really cool one. Um. This is some sort of, I think this kind of might be some counterfeit action, but that's like labeled made in Great Britain. I'm not really sure what it is. Anyways, a bunch of tubes. Bunch of tubes, bunch of tubes. What else have I got that's interesting? Anything? Not really. I've shown you, you know, all the, all the rather cool stuff. There's a... 5879 RCA. I already showed you guys the mullard boxes. There's a GE label. These are these are mullards. Or at least what came in these boxes. These are GE labeled. Yep. So once again, you know, they used to rebrand all the time. These are labeled General Electric, which of course American brand, but 67 EL34 made in Great Britain. These are just a mullard that were rebranded by GE. And you would see this a lot. You know, uh, RCA labeled, you know, uh, Mullard EL34s. So it was, it was confusing back then too. But yeah, that's a GE boxed with Mullards. Anyway, little tube show and tell. So I have some of this stuff, you know, for a rainy day. And it's fun to play with. Uh, well, uh, it's about 7.39. I'm probably going to split pretty quick here. I'll tell you what, I'll stay till 7.45. And uh, Tom Lynn says, so Pete has all the tubes. Not really. I've got to, compared to some folks, you know, I've seen uh, uh, some people out there that have real, you know, I've got, i got enough pairs of EL34s to keep my vintage Marshall and, you know, my, my Comet here, I guess, like, you know, the kind of the boutique 50 waters. You know, the new amps, the, the P, you know, PT100 and, the, you know, my signature amp and stuff, I'm just fine with the new tubes in all those. It's just kind of fun in the old amps to play around with the, uh, the uh, you know, the Mullards and the Siemens and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, Super Chat, if you can grab it, says Vincent. I will do that. Uh, let me back up. Let's see where it was. Sorry. I know in all that... Uh, a fuffle of me trying to find the there you are vincent uh, me trying to find the tubes did you ever discuss the new tech modelers with ed did he see anything positive about any of it that's a really interesting question um you can see a video of him uh playing um some sort of plug-in that you know it's got nothing to do with me it was like somebody went over there and they showed him a plug-in he was kind of digging it and playing um <clears throat> he asked me about uh he watched a video of me doing a, an Axe FX. Uh, it was for the FX8. So that was just an effect unit. But he's like, I watched a video of you playing the, the FX8 from that fractal company. Like, what's that thing all about? And I was like, oh, it's cool. It's like a multi effect. You can run it, you know, in front of your amp and run it in the loop. And we talked about that and stuff. I remember that one day talking to him about that. I don't remember ever having a discussion with him about like, Kemper or any of that stuff. He asked me about the FX8. And I'll tell you, like the thing about Eddie uh, was I tried to not ask him about gear. So some people might be like, hey, why don't you ever ask him about like, you know, what he did back in the day or whatever. I specifically never really breached those subjects. I talked to him about family and about, uh, you know, <laughs> all cut relationships and about all kinds of other stuff. Guitar gear, 
not so much. And the reason for that was because I always wanted to keep it good. And he had a thing about, I probably, if I would have asked the right way, he probably would have been fine talking about it. Uh, but I know that he had a thing about kind of protecting his secrets or, you know, not wanting to, sh you know, he was like, uh, he, he, you know, he was a guy that had a history of um, people sort of stealing his ideas or whatever, and then taking them and trying to market them or capitalize on them or, you know, be it, you know, when he, he played, you really got me for uh, somebody from a band before it came out. And then, uh, you know, he got an angry call the next day from somebody, maybe Ted Templeman or somebody saying, did you play the, you know, because they hadn't told anybody that we do that cover. And there was some other band that had gone in and cut it right away and tried to beat Van Halen to the punch of putting out a version of you really got me a rock version because they heard Eddie's version and they thought it was really cool. And so, uh, from that to the stripes on the guitar and you know it's 78 and then all of a sudden late 78 early 79 there's companies marketing be it you know charvel or some you know overseas companies all of a sudden copying his stripe pattern he's like what the hell i'm trying to make my guitar look original and you know that kind of stuff so so he's just always really sort of protective and i you got a you know little taste of, i just knew it was like probably good to never be like hey so how'd you do that thing or how did you you know so i never asked him that much so long-winded way of just saying uh that um he asked me about modeling about in particular it was the fx8 unit which was an effect modeler with no amp models in it from axe effects and he was interested in that and he'd gone and actually watched a video on youtube of mine not me telling him about it or anything he'd go hey i saw you on youtube playing this thing tell me about that thing i thought that was interesting is that that was when i realized oh he like he, he's on there just like we all are like watching some of this stuff so you know uh, kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, oh, we got almost 600 people online. How am I supposed to leave now when we got 600 people online talking about this? If there's anybody new on here, I was just mentioning kind of, uh, early on in the, you know, early on, I was saying I went and ordered some tubes. I'm not like giving props to, you know, not working for anybody or anything like that, but I wanted to try like, okay, what can I get for yield 34? So I went and ordered some of these jobbies, these guys right here from the tube amp doctor website these are made by a company called ps vein and uh i bought some they weren't cheap it was around 90 to 100 dollars with shipping can't remember for a matched pair but they're a tube that you can get right now that uh you know i mean they are out of stock now i noticed but you know they were out of stock when i ordered they came in in one day and then they shipped that same day they sent me a pair so anyway there you go i've got some of these coming and, uh, you know, my whole thing was kind of cautious, uh, optimism. Uh, I'm always an optimist and I think that, um, maybe, you know, um, there's cause for some concern, but like, don't panic by. And I think that there's where there's money to be made, people are going to want to make money. And that, that was kind of my whole goal here coming on today is that I just think that there's, you know, between the. A couple of factories in China that one still questionable because it hasn't come back online yet, as I understand. But what I've heard is they're supposed to be shipping tubes, the big Chinese factory, you know, by the new year. Um, and, you know, that they've set up again and stuff like that, that they're working towards that. We will see, you know. But and then also the news today that, uh, you know, I guess coming from Mike Matthews, that they're going to supposedly be filling orders again and shipping stuff in uh, April. You know, I don't know. That was just today that they said that after some concern for the last few days that they wouldn't be doing any of that in 2022 anymore. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's that. Um, you know, just uh, cautious optimism was the point of me coming online today from things that I've heard and stuff and things that just as a, uh, I'm not, not an insider, well, that's sort of an insider. I guess I get to, you know, I do have contact with some folks in this industry and that are concerned about, you know, all this stuff. And and I'll just say that they, they're concerned, but they seem also like, like I am cautiously optimistic that everything's going to be cool. That said, we're probably going to pay more for things for a little while. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a question about the headrest effects by the word. I like headrest stuff. I think it's really good. I think I like, they were the first ones to do the touch screen thing. And, uh, and the sounds were good coming right from the old, you know, uh, was the Pro Tools, um, can't remember the name of the company, but, you know, they kind of poured it over that technology, it became Head Rush, and I, I, I think it's quite good, you know. I know my friend Tracy Guns is a big fan, Neely, Neely Brush is a big fan. Uh, 
yeah. So, uh, anyways, um, uh, Lawrence says, I bet with Eddie, you got to talk gear when he called you and said, Hey, come have a look at this. Yeah. He would ask me about gear sometimes. And that's when I would talk gear with him, which was like, really? Like Eddie Van Halen's going to ask me about gear. Like for instance, like I turned him on to the, we were talking about wireless and I was using this great a AKG digital wireless back 10 years ago or 15, 12 years ago or whatever. And I actually hooked him up with the folks at AKG and they got him one and stuff. And he tried it. He ended up going with sure, but he did like it. I remember he had an issue. This is a problem with all wirelesses. And I can almost guarantee that he probably would have used the AKG if it hadn't been for the fact that there was a ground loop when you would use it. Um, you know, you need to transform or isolate coming out of the wireless, which like sure has right on their units now on the Axiant, which I use now, uh, you know, a ground lift. They had a ground lift on the XLR out, but not on the quarter inch out. It's like, you are going to get a ground loop every time. And that turned him off. He tried it and he was like, why is all this noise? You know? And I was like, oh, he's getting a, a ground loop. And I was like, you need to transform isolate. And I had to pull him, call Dave Friedman. He'll build you a little box and stuff like that. And it'll work. And then he contacted me a couple of days later. He goes, that little box totally did the trick. It solved all the buzz problems. It's awesome. But then I heard he you know then he he tried to sure maybe in the meantime or something he ended up with sure so this is like for the 2011 2012 you know different kind of truth era when he went on tour then and stuff but anyway he did try the akg and stuff so we would have conversations like that sometimes it was amazing to me i mean that he would ask me anything you know but uh i also turned him on to the uh one piece of gear i did like kind of not like like i i just thought it was so cool that i had to show him was the uh the digitech freak out and I knew he got one of those. I, I was like, you got to check this out. Or I sent him a text. I remember where I just played the open G string or something. And I was holding the phone with one hand, filming the pedal. And I stepped on it. And it took off into feedback and just sustained. You know, and I just sent him the text. And he's right to me back. What the hell is that thing? <laughs> you know? I was like, it's cool, right? And next thing I know, like, you know, I think Matt called me and was like, hey, he's, we want, he wants one of those things. What is that thing? <laughs> So we would have those, you know, a, a, a few times, I guess there was those occasions or whatever. Um, but anyways, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, I should go soon, but uh, what do we got on? 600 folks. You guys are great being here. Thanks for hanging out. I thought maybe it wouldn't be that busy tonight because it's kind of late. Probably nobody in Europe, they're all sleeping, but I guess there's anxiety about tubes in the in, in America, right? Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, you guys are talking about bass amps. Yeah, this is a, you know, it might be, if you're a bass player, I would probably just go, that's all I'd say at this point. I had a Mace, Mace Boogie Strategy 500 stereo that had eight 606 Vetlanas. That's pretty wild. I want to be retubing that right now. Uh, but here's an excellent point uh, from Lawrence. Uh, Groove tube 606 pair have lasted in my basement 70 since 1995. So there you go. That's the one thing to, you know, just you don't need to change them if they're working. You really don't. You should have a spare set if you're a gigging musician. But if you're not and you're just playing at home or whatever, or, you know, if, if it's not a crucial thing, it's like, yeah, just don't, you know. If you're going on the road and you've got a solid state or modeling backup, I don't even know that you need to bring an extra pair out. Um, you know, if it's working and they've been working for a while, you know, you're in good shape, you know. Just try and not, you know, be driving the hell out of them, uh, you know, on a daily basis into a load or something. That's the main thing. But you really don't need to change them into preamp tubes. You really don't need to change them if there's no problems. Any plans to review the Boss GX100? Looks like a great price point feature set. I'd be happy to. Um, I, I'm doing some other stuff for them coming up, actually. So they're probably just kind of one thing at a time. But um, we will see moving forward, you know. Uh, yeah, let's see. Type Tabor uses solid state amps. I mentioned him earlier. He uses this orange head that's like a 200 watt. Looks really cool. Sounded great at the gig. I saw him using it out. Really, really great. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Um, let's see. 
This is the, was my other point here, and I totally agree. It's a supply and demand thing. If there's enough of a market for guitar tubes, someone in America will start manufacturing. I just don't think it'll be in America. You know, I don't, I don't think that uh, we had a little talk earlier for those that uh, uh, were, were here. You know, I asked everybody, what's the maximum they would pay for a pair of EL34s, you know, if they were American made? I said 500 bucks. I'll go all in if somebody makes an American made for 250 a tube. Match pair, 500 bucks. I'm in. A lot of people said a couple hundred. Somebody said a thousand. I wouldn't go a thousand. <laughs> I mean, five hundred is my limit. But uh, I don't think making them in America. I mean, I put up the link earlier. If, if anybody wants to see, there's an American made three hundred B. It's uh, you know fifteen hundred for a match pair. That's pretty wild. But they're in business. They're making them, and folks buy them for hi-fi. So uh, Patrick Carroll's asked me about seeing the darkness. So speaking, okay, so the darkness, uh, I saw them last night, uh, and it was great. And talk about, you know, when you go to shows and there's just not enough guitar. Uh, check this out. i find it here. Um, and a lot of shows, like, I can't hear the guitar in the mix, you know. Was from the back of the room. <laughs> My ears were ringing like crazy when I left that show, but the guitar was just like kicking ass in the PA. It was really great. So my friend um, Leticia Wolf, she's the singer for the Dead Deads, Meta Dead in the Dead Deads, and they were opening. They have they have names like kind of like you know the Ramones did. So she's Meta, 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 Meta. Anyway, that's what she goes by. Leticia, I know her as Tish. Uh, her band's opening for them on tour, so I went and checked them out last night. It was really fun. It was great. Uh, yeah, lots of guitar. And, and you know, uh, his name's Justin, right, from The Darkness. I uh, hadn't uh checked out his youtube channel and so today somebody was like oh i love his youtube channel my friend matt was like i love his youtube channel sure enough his youtube channel is fantastic so if you haven't seen his youtube uh he's a character so it's worth checking out lead singer from the darkness great youtube channel uh keith says thanks for all you do coincidentally my soldano just started dropping and then increasing in volume sporadically sound like power tubes i hate to tell you that indeed it does that's definitely the power tubes. I mean, in my experience, that's going to be the problem. If you ever get an amp that fades up and down in volume, that's one of the, the things that you'll notice. Uh, so yeah, you need to need to find some new, uh, uh, see if you can find some 5881s or something. Or, or I mean, if, you, if we're to believe, uh, you know, the line from Mike Matthews today that evidently they will be shipping uh, some tubes as of uh, April. So you might be able to get some, but you might want to just try because I heard that these sound really good in one of those amps. Uh, the 606, go to the tube amp doctor website and check out some of the 606 from Tad because these are these are the ad for the you, know, you can see it over here on the uh, right side of this it says 606 GCM as well as EL34 STR red bass from Tad. It's supposed to be quite quite good. The 606 is from what I've heard, so I did hear that. You heard it from me. It's supposed to be quite good. Grab some. Run your 100 waters at 50 to conserve tubes. You could do that. You could pull a pair. And uh, if you do that, you just have to half the impedance setting on the amp. So if you, let's say you're to 50 watt, say it's a 100 watt Marshall and it's 16 ohm, 16 ohm cabinet. Pull two tubes. Now you need to set the amp for eight ohms. So just do that. And uh, you should be good, but that's one thing you could do, yeah. And then because they were hopefully a match set that you had in there, shouldn't have to. If you need to change them down the road, you shouldn't have to rebuy us. Um, might want to anyway, but technically you could just pop them in and and roll. Hopefully, a uh, couple super chats. Thanks you guys. Uh, SMY tree. Thanks to you guys earlier for all the super chat stuff and everybody for hanging out. I know this went a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be on here for an hour or something, but this has been a good discussion and stuff, and I feel like, uh, you know, it's fun that we did this. Uh, could you do a meet and greet when you're here in Vancouver? I probably uh, won't really have time to do that, uh, unfortunately. Um, 
it's uh, it's a it's a trip that I'm doing to film something, um, and so they've, it's kind of a work trip, and I just don't know about scheduling anything else. Uh, that's the only that's the only thing. So uh, it might be difficult, but I really appreciate the sentiment. I do, and if that changes, and if I can get up there, I would love to come there and do a clinic, and I will explore that uh, option. So maybe I can be coming back at some point relatively soon to do that. Like, I believe there's a, a shop there that sells Sir, and maybe I can explore the possibility of, of getting up there to do some sort of clinic. So, um, yeah, uh, this is interesting. This fellow says he's uh, been playing over 30 years and never tried a tube amp my whole life. How's that possible? 30 years, the 90s? What did you, what have you been using? Even in the 90s? Ever? Jam at a gig? Rehearsal studio? Nobody had a deluxe reverb or something? Really? Come on now. Are you sure? Is that possible? Uh, John says, thanks so much for geeking out with all of us. Love your content. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. You guys are amazing. Thanks for the super chats and stuff. It's been great being here. I don't want to go, except I'm hungry, so I'm going to go get uh, some dinner. I ate a massive pastrami sandwich last night at Cantor's Deli on Fairfax uh, after the darkness. I just had like this every now and then I get a, you know, when you get a craving and my craving last night was Cantor's pastrami, which if you're in LA, I mean, I'm sure there's some other great spots, but Cantor's pastrami is as solid as it gets, but it's kind of greasy and so, and it's a lot. So I figure I should eat something healthy tonight. That was the point of that whole story. Probably going to get a chicken salad or something. That was enough. Uh, it was like a this massive pastrami and potato salad situation. It was actually just amazing. It was delicious. It was exactly what I wanted. It's just what I had in mind. Uh, pastrami rule says, yeah, I, I, I don't eat that much meat these days, but occasionally I go all in and last night, boy, did I ever, uh, Steve says the hedgehog is his dream amp savings for some time. So it is a really terrific amp, great amp. If you're looking for kind of the dumbly thing or, a, you know, American gain, it's, it's terrific. I think, uh, kick up the likes, says Cooper. Yeah, if you don't mind, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, hit all that stuff. If you, I'm just unabashedly asking, go for it. Kelly says, thanks for hanging out. I'm happy to be here. Atomic Punk, thanks for chatting. You bet. So, hey, it's been fun. I was supposed to uh, uh, be uh, uh, doing something else today, but uh, whatever, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> There's always time tomorrow. Uh and what else we got here? Uh, just before I go, just before I go, just before I go. Bought an EVH 5150 Iconic today. Would love to see you review it. I don't do a lot of reviews for other amps because I have kind of an amp line with the, the, uh, the I was going to say the 5150. That's not my amp. The uh, PT100 and PT15 are, you know, so I just kind of shy away from doing too many amps. Occasionally I do preamps or things, but... Uh, you know, who knows? That may change, you know? We'll see. We'll see. There's part of me that wants to start, you know, and there's a part of me that's like, I've just tried to stay very, 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 very loyal to only, you know, as far as, you know, because I have an amp. I have two amps, so, but uh, we'll see, you know? Uh, anything else there? Amazing things uh, that I that I need to state, that I need to say before I go? I don't think so. It's been It's been brilliant, though, folks. And uh, where would I try a PT-15, says K. Campbell. Depends where you are. Look for a local sir dealer, somebody close to you. If they don't have one, tell them, what are you waiting for? You should have one. Uh, GC, a lot of the platinum room GCs, like Nashville, LA, it's great. Because like in LA, there was they were hard to find. I mean, if you could find one anywhere. But um, now they've got them. So it's really cool. Nashville, you'll find one there. You're in Dallas. Uh GC Dallas, I mean, they've got a big guitar center there, right? Uh, call the Platinum Room and see if they've got one. Uh, I've been really impressed that a lot of them have had them. You know, they've, they've gone out like, you know, GC Nashville, I think, has a PT100 and a 412 on the floor right now, which is awesome in the age of, you know, not a lot of big amps being around and stuff. That's really cool. And I appreciate their support. So I would I would call them. Uh, uh, might be other options in, you know, uh, you know, Texas. There's like Midland and other Sir dealers around, you know, uh, but... Yeah. 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 Give them a call and see if they've, uh, see if they've got one in. I'd be interested to know, actually. Let me know on the, on my Sunday stream if you can come back. And, uh, Tom Lynn says Humbucker has, sir. That's true. Yep. 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 
out of all the amps you played and which one comes close to that dumble sound i'm not an expert in the dumble sound i don't claim to be uh i just know the hedgehog you know is basically i mean you know there's a little bit of dumble lineage to be honest in the pt-15 in the clean channel um and uh hedgehog you know is definitely that kind of sound to me it's like a it's not as aggressive in the top end it's not martial it's like but you can get quite gainy with it and it's got a very sweet lead tone that to me is the dumble thing broadly but i don't know you know i'm no john mayer i don't have like some you know i've played a couple dumbles and they're really cool uh the ones that i played i played a, a really great kind of combo in japan once that was a a uh Overdrive special combo that was with an EV, I think, in it. Of course, you know, only speaker that could handle it. But uh, uh, it uh, it was loud and, and cool. It sounded really good. Javier, thanks for the super chat. You guys are so cool. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what tubes do I need to have for backups for the PT-15? Uh, well, the one that is the main to have, your 12X7s are, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you get a spare 12X7 or two lying around, you can get, just just have one of the, two of those around. But the, it's the JJ, it's, a, you know, if you can get a matched pair of JJ 6V6s, find a pair of those. JJs, there's been a little bit of, you know, they're back ordered and stuff, a little bit of supply, you know, it's just, but, you know, no panic buying on those either. The great thing about the PT-15 is that it's designed to run really chill, the power section so like for instance the amp that i used on the classic rock show tour recently uh when i was just overseas in uk it's got the same power tubes in it that it had in 2020 when i did the first tour i was a little worried about it so i had them match up a set of 6v6s that i took with me this time around because they write you know that was great they they write the uh two different numbers on the base and on the top of the tube that and with that knowledge they can then match another set so I took a match set over, never needed them. So in other words, long-winded way of saying, I used the same tubes in the amp for a whole tour in 2020, used them again in 2022 uh, for, you know, 60 dates total, three-hour gigs, never needed to change them. The amp sounded exactly the same every day and was awesome, nice and quiet, just perfect. So with that, I'll let you go. I think that that's the point is that if your amp's working, don't panic. You know, you don't need to change the tubes maybe as much as you, you know, you know, it's, it's cool. Like just, uh, just you know, don't don't stress this is all gonna work itself out i think is my point if i'm wrong we'll see but i bet you in within i bet you within a year that other this is my prediction i'm gonna say it right now i bet the other chinese tube factories back online probably making tubes again uh maybe the ps fame folks have picked up the slack hopefully you know with the you know you know the crazy stuff going on in the world right now let's just all hope and pray that that just sorts itself uh, you know, I don't know what's the world's not going to go back to be the way it was, but you know, let's hope it because geez, pray for peace and all that. Let's not fight. No fighting. We don't like that. We'll end on that note. No fighting. I love you all. Thanks for all the super chats. Thanks for being here. Fun discussion. And I'll see you Sunday. If you got time, come hang out Sunday. Got some other videos to make this week and stuff. You'll see something uh, from me hopefully before then. Okay. Take care, you guys. Over and out.